um, six runs, yeah. you know, where the horse is almost, you know, but they have to be really super fit. But to play 20 gold polo, 16 gold polo, eight minutes of, of a good momentum and then a couple of runs where they change the win. Touchy. Have you ever fallen out of love with the game? No, well, you know, one thing uh, when I asked my father, I was your age and your age, I said, I want to play polo, I want to play polo, I want to play polo, I want them, this guy to let me play. I, want them. I said, son, one day you're going to say, I don't want to play polo, you know, anymore. And uh, sometimes you get exhausted, you know, sometimes it's very demanding, very tiring. And uh, probably my biggest fault as a player, and if I was going to do it again, what I would change in my career, it would have been stay fresher. You know, I overdid it. I overworked myself. I over, I exhaust myself with the training. And now, if I was going to do something differently, it would be stay rest, fresh, go to the game with the, with the thing of, you know, playing, playing with an edge, you know, with a with a gusto, with a with a energy. And uh, sometimes I remember going to the game and said, oh, you know, at, all, I, all, the all I have to do today is play six shockers. Because before I would have to ride 20 horses, play two practice games, stick a horse after the game, blah, blah. But it was my, my nature, and that was a mistake I, I made in my career. So you have to be balanced, moderation. The same thing with the horses. You know, it's like sometimes you need to stick and ball four or five horses a day. Sometimes you only have to stick and ball two horses. But with, with, with um, momentum, you know, with timing, moving, walking, stick and balling at a standing still ball is no good. You need to move, practice. It's better to practice 10 minutes, 15 minutes at a good pace than two hours just striking the ball at a, at a, at a, at a, at a lope, you know. But no, I have never fallen in, you know, uh, uh, fallen out of love with the game. I, I love it. I have, um, you know, I have my son Julio playing and I love watching him play and I see Carlos play and I see games and I see new players and I see now in my, in my uh, stage of my career, I go to see horses. I say, what horses, what new horses are in this season? I don't want to care about the players, you know. I want to see what, who has a better a champion horse. That's what I'm really interested. The players, I know they're great players, all of them, and the level, you know, they're there, but I want to see who has the best champion this year. Who, who made the champion? That's, that's the difficult part. Um, what are the, like, small tips that you received when you were sort of rising as playing that sort of changed your whole game? You know, they're easy things that you're appearing. Well, the thing is, was the very, in very simple terms, I think the tips that you have to practice now is to practice what you play, or, you know, what, what, you, what, what the game is all about. Going back to stick and ball, you need to stick and ball at a good pace. You need to stick and ball the difficult shots, the ones that you never use. That's what the ones that you need to practice. The going forward shot, it's, it's the easiest one, but they, this is the one that you probably need to practice the least. You need to practice all the other shots at all times. So, number one, practice the, what you use in the game. Two, with determination. If you're going to practice, go to practice. You know, you see in the professional tennis players, professional basketball players, professional soccer players, when they go to work, I mean, I remember seeing a documental about uh, Michael Jackson. The guy, he was the worst doing this shot and he practiced so much that he, he became the best at it, you know. So it's the same with me, you know, the same with me. I had problems with my near side backhander. When I practiced that shot, the forward and, and, and near side backhander, until it, it became near side, I was one of the best. But at the beginning, I was one of the worst. So you need to practice that. But you need to practice with, 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 with the determination and the, I'm on the practice and I'm on the practice and I'm on the practice until you get it. Near side, backhanders, what shot you didn't make in the game? What part of the game you didn't, it's, it's, it's missing, or, or you have a weakness on it? Work on that, work on that, and think about it, you know? And watch the game, I say like, to ride a man off, where do I ride the man off? I go to the shoulder, I go to the head, I go to the back, you know, you have to go to the shoulder of the horse to make contact, to ride him off, to get your mother ready. Watch the games. Watch the things that you you will you will practice and you will execute and you will you will do. But you need to do it with with uh, uh, energy. You know, you see a lot of players sticking balling with you know just with a loose rein and sticking ball like that. It's like that's a waste of time. You, they can do it for a hundred years. They're never going to improve. When you see them riding and you sit, the other thing that you want to learn about the game, you know, tips is training with uh, with gusto and also your seat, your position. Your position has to be the the half seat. 
which you all of you know. They have seat, they maintain that half seat, you know, with your knees, and stay up in the saddle. Stick and ball and riding. Then you have very nice legs and very and very strong legs. But that's what you need to do, you know. Full seat, stick and ball like that, is not good. So you need to get up in the saddle and start practicing at speed, where you can carry the ball at a certain speed, you know. I'm not saying flat out, but just a certain speed where you feel comfortable. And then in the game, at that speed, you're going to be all comfortable to carry it. But if you stick and ball at a walk and then you go at a full speed in the game, you're going to miss it every time. Right? And the third time is the horsemanship, you know, riding the horses to the same thing, you know, to get in the turns, stopping, turning, running, to make it, uh, you know, to get the most out of your horse. You know, so you're working yourself and you're working the horse. Just uh, the horse thing, for right now, like, I don't have my own horses, so I'm always riding other people's horses. Yes. How, how do you sort of get in touch with that horse? And, I mean, you get on and you have a minute to warm up. You know, I mean, how do you get the best out of a horse that you don't know necessarily? Well, it's, number one, be careful when you don't know horses. So you have to be very alert and you have to ride the horse like the horse, you know, always be at a, at a, at a guard, you know, always be protect yourself, you know, always with the rein, rein short until you get the feeling of the horse that the horse is fine. I mean, a little bit dramatic about that, but it's, it's, that's how accidents happen. So you have to be always alert, number one. Don't hit the ball the first time, ride the horse first to make sure that the horse is not bucking, it doesn't have any bad habits, or etc, 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 etc. That's very important. Number two, then when you get the feeling on the horse that the horse is safe, then you start riding the horse with confidence, but riding like if the horse is a good horse. The horse has, is a very sensitive animal. So if you ride him with roughness and, and insecurity and uh, double guessing and, and uh, jerking, the horse is going to be also is going to say like, I need to protect myself. This guy is, you know, I don't know what he's going to do. So the horse starts tensing and getting stiff and they don't want to cooperate. But if you ride him light, once you have confidence on the horse, then the horse starts relaxing and starts feeling the same thing. The same sensation that you are receiving, he, the horse is receiving. Oh, somebody's a good rider, he's easy with his hands, he's not going to pull in my head, he's not going to pull in my mouth, he's going to let me be free and let me play to, to, the, to this, uh, their limitations, you know? But ride him with confidence that the horse can do it. Give him confidence. That's the best way to get the most out of the horse. Don't overdo it, don't uh, force it. Don't do something that is going to upset the horse, right? Nick? Uh, when you're creating a, a 20 goal team, you're looking at younger players <coughs> and considering horses being somewhat comparable, what specific playing attributes are most important to you? Well, you yeah, when you're trying to pick players, the first thing you want to see is that they're good horsemen. Why? Because the good horseman is going to be able to ride better horses and is going to get the most out of their horses. If a guy has a lot of talent and uh, hits the ball very well, when you go into the 20 gold polo or the high gold polo or the, sub, the professional polo, uh, the, your horsemanship is your, your most important tool. Uh, because if you're not a good horseman and if you don't ride the horse well, you're not going to get there. It doesn't matter how badly you want it or how, how desperate you are. So they have to be good riders. They have to have some, like, you know, riding with sensitivity, with, uh, with the finesse, with the um, confidence that the horses are good and they can ride a good horse. So if I want to choose two players, I'm always going to choose the one that has the, who is the best uh, horseman, the one that has the best uh, horse sense, that the one that has to improve in his game, you know, he's going to get better with, uh, with, uh, with experience and uh, with, uh, with the horsemanship. Horsemanship is the most important thing in the game. Um, I guess, what has been your most difficult green horse experience or maybe your more, most problematic horse <coughs> to train and what have you done to remedy that? Well, um, very good question. Very good question. Isn't it? There are different courses, you know, I mean, I have had some experience in horses that um, probably the most uh, breaking point of my, on my career was a, call, a horse called Sipper. Uh, and it was a horse that I spent a year and a half trying to teach him to stick and ball. And uh, every time he saw the ball, he will charge, he will get a grab of the beat. Endless stamina. I mean, you could play him for two hours or ride him for two hours, the horse will not miss a bit. You know, he was just like a powerful machine. And I stick and ball him and stick and ball him and stick and ball him. The more stick and ball him, the worse he got. So I said, you know, what do I do with this horse? I said, the ball upsets him, the swing upsets him, the mallet upsets him, everything upsets him, you know. And I was this close to get rid of him, you know, 
or do it. So I said, well, I only, but you know, I stick a ball from the ground and put the mallet was the thing that upsets him. And some horses, when you put him in the competition, when you put him with other horses, then the horses, they start focusing on the other horses in the game, in the thing, and they actually relax. They're horses that are on their own, they get very nervous, especially when they come out from the racetrack, they get excited and they are, they panic, you know, they get a little bit uh, paranoid about, about the racing, about the bad experience. And sometimes when you put them with the competition, they settle down. Well, this horse, I decided to put him in a, in a, in a fast practice game. I said, I'm not going to put him in the slow practice game because I know it's not going to work. So I'm going to put him in a fast practice game. And uh, I went to it and he became one of my best horses ever. You know, we won the US Open together, we won the $100,000 in Royal Palm, we won endless amount of tournaments. And this horse was, until the last day of his polo career, he was always bucking and feeling fresh and coming to the game. But if I have not taken the chance on the horse, I would have never been able to have a super champion, one of the best horses I've ever ridden in my life. So there are horses that sometimes they are not learning. It's not like they're not learning, they're not understanding what you want them. You know, whether they don't turn to the right, or they don't play, or they don't stick and ball. So you have to find a way to think about how to get it to understand. It's not that the horse doesn't want to do it, it's that they don't understand. The horse came from the racetrack. He came from the, I think he came from Utah, that they are in the West. And those racetracks are the worst, you know, the worst horses, the worst riders, the worst horsemen. And this horse was abused. So it, this horse, every time he saw something swinging or whips or something, he would get so excited. But once you put him in the ray, in the competition, the horse come down. And, um, what can I tell you? You know, it was just one of those things that I tried something and it happened. There are horses that sometimes you have to do it from the ground. You know, it doesn't work on the on their backs. You have to go to the ground. Start from the basics to teach them to back up on the ground, to teach them to 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 to, to move their hindquarters from the ground, to teach them to respect you from the ground. So sometimes you have to go to basics. Why the horse is something is upsetting him? One thing that it cost me. It took me a long time to understand that like when the horses don't do it, it's because they are either sore, most of the time, they have some pain somewhere, or they're not understanding what, what you want them to do. So you have to change sometimes the training, you know, so the horse understands what, the, what are you asking him. Bill? Um, how do you deal with the difficult loss? Difficult? Loss. Of a horse? No, of a game. Of a game? Um, I was the worst loser ever. It took me, <laughs> it took me probably a month. You know, if after I lost a game, I will, I will go, I will play it in my head. What, uh, what were the mistakes? I never said, you know, um, they beat, they beat me. I said I lost the game. I lost the game. Why did I do wrong? What, uh, what could, what could I do to, to, to change that result? Um, you play the game in your head. And you, 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 you have to go and, and think about um, how to improve it, you know. Why did you lose it? You lost a penalty, you make a foul, you make a, the wrong decision, you didn't mark your man, you did, were not told, you didn't do what you were told to do, uh, you made the list, the horse list the uh, wrong way, you play your good horse or you didn't, you know, etc. There are a million things that, that goes into the game. But the, 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 the important factor here, Bill, is like when you go into the game, don't go with the fear of losing the game. Go with the attitude of you're going to play your best game, you're, going to, no, you're not going to make mistakes, you're going to play better than the last game, and the result is secondary. Don't look at the score. Don't think about the score. Execute your plays. Execute your game. Execute your plan. When you do that and you do it correct and proper, the result is going to be secondary, and most of the times, I almost guarantee it's going to be in your favor. So, it's a reverse psychology. When you lose, try to make uh, clear your mistakes. But when you go into the next game, try to play better, better than the last game you play. Time out. <laughs> Can you talk about confirmation real quick on horses? What's your favorite type of confirmation? Well, it's uh, it has changed. You know, it has changed because at the beginning we didn't have any money, so we have to pick whatever horse we can get, and it was all sizes, all kinds of types. But I think what you want to look into the polo pony is uh, the balance in a horse. There are some horses that are a little bit larger than others, but you want a horse that is balanced. Meaning that the horse is, uh, it, it has harmony in the body, you know. 
if the horse has a big head and a small butt or short legs and a big body or a long neck and a short back, that doesn't work. If you have a horse that has harmony, it's, you know, you want him to be compact. You said you, I, you want a compact horse. You don't want a compact horse that is a chunk, you know, kind of a, hits the ground and you feel like you are having four flat tires and, and you would, everything vibrates, you know, that's no, no good. You want a horse that is fluid, that it has some kind of a, a elasticity when he's playing polo. But it has to be with harmony, it has to be balanced. You want a very, the angle of the neck in polo is very important. You know, one thing is I always look into the horse's neck. What, how is the horse's neck, the joint, you know, the angle. If it is too, you know, you neck, high, high headed horse, probably it's not going to be a good horse. If it is too low horse, sometimes it's going to be difficult to make, you know, because the horse is going to be hard for him to get in on the hind quarters. So you want a horse that was a good angle, the, the neck and shoulders are well, are well put together. And then the rest of the horse has to be with harmony. It has to have a good back, short, short uh, cannon bones, you know, short pasterns, but not in a way that it goes to the other extreme, you know. But you want a horse with harmony. I don't know if I explain myself, but that's that's what you you you're looking at. Talk about dealing with patrons. I mean, all these guys are starting to learn more. And I can I can ask that question because I try to be one. But I think a lot of these young players are trying to figure out. How they how they work with them, how to get them involved in tournaments, how to help the patrons who are obviously here who want to play and continually be better. What what are some tips that you might give them? Well, the patrons are people that are very intelligent people. They can see they're more intelligent than than, we, than the professionals, you know, by far, because obviously they've been very successful in their in their career and their lives. So they can see all the details, the small details. People, the smart people, they see details, small details, you know, about. Uh, Punctuality, working ethics, appearance, uh, consistency, and all that stuff. So what I'm trying to say to you is that when you want to approach a patron and the patron tells you to be there at 7 o'clock, don't be at 7.01. Be at quarter till 7. Be always ahead of him. Be always anticipating, you know. All those little details, it will show into your uh, future in, in the relationship with him. And that's very important, you know. Always people joke to me about my boots. So they were always the shiniest and the cleanest and the blah, blah, blah. I said, you know what, but this respect to the game and respect to the people that you're working for and, uh, and respect to yourself. Because if you don't have time to clean your boots, just imagine the rest of your body. <laughs> it's like, if you're going to play ball, that's what you're showing. Imagine what you're not showing. You know, it's like a little bit of a, but it's, it's the truth of the matter, you know. So you always have to present yourself, give the best impression Best, be, be, give the best presentation of yourself. And when you're playing polo, you have to be a good teammate on and off the field. It doesn't matter if you're 10 goals, 8 goals, or 1 goal, or 0 goals. It's to be a good teammate. If they ask you to do one thing, to do the other one, to be attentive, to be a, a responsive, to be alert, to, to, to be all that, you know, it's very important. And one of the things here with, uh, and I'm going to give you an example, is for instance the Argentine people compared to the American people or the English people. The Argentines, they are devoted to the to their patron, you know, they do whatever they want him to, you know, they are 24-7, I mean, 24-7, they are co constant with them. And we have the tendency to say, well, I'm not going to be a slave, I'm not going to be this, I mean, I'm going to, do that. I'm going to extremes, I'm going to do things. I'm talking about the, the, the job sense, that when you want to do something, do it with passion, and do it with determination and dedication. And times, places, working, preparation, uh, approach, the way you present yourself, the way you talk to them, the way you direct to them, everything has to be in a professional manner because you want to be professionals, you want to be uh, invited to, to the team. So that's very important, very, very important for all of you to, to understand. Uh, to approach patrons how to play polo, it's in a way um, you need the help with players. Players will get you to the patrons. There is always a line of you know, people between the patron and the guys. So you have to approach the players first and make yourself available to, to, to do something for them. You know? And uh, I have some experience with you, with Mason and, and, and some of you, but uh, it's, like, um, it's, it's a difficult, difficult topic because it's a professional world and they're always looking for the better player, you know, the, better, the ringer, the, the best player, the best underrated player. And you have to, you guys have to fight among against each other to get that position. 
But you have to start from your, within yourself to be ready for that opportunity, you know, and to be hungry about it. And when they give you the opportunity, you have to be 24-7. You have to be ready to, to execute and ready to, to, to do what they're asking you to do. I don't know if I answer your question, but it's a little bit of a professional point. That's what it is. It's, it's ruthless. You know, it's one thing that the patron invites you to play in the, in the summer polo and relax. But it's the same thing, you know. Uh, a lot of players, a lot of young players, you ask them to be there at 3 o'clock and they, they get there at 5 till 10, running, rushing. I said, what else do you have to do, you know? Anticipate, make sure that all, all the things are covered to get there one hour before or two hours before the game. It doesn't matter. Be there. Don't wait for a flat tire. Don't wait for a horse that didn't load. Don't wait for any incident that was going to make you late to an, to an appointment or to a game or to a thing. And I'm giving you examples that are very simple to understand, but that's what it takes, that's what it, it made a professional, you know. You give the, the, when you become a professional player, it's like, uh, it's not because I make money, it's because I'm dedicated to it. You know, in the morning, in the afternoon, at night, you're, you're planning, you're organizing. Why do we have, when I first started playing polo in the United States, we only have one groom and for, per player. I said, why don't we have two grooms per player so the horse are better take care of. So I was the first one to start with two grooms. The horses were better. In the, the big scale of things, you know, one groom is, doesn't make the difference. You know, it's a small, small, small quantity of money. Then when you start using spare horses, I started with that because we were playing, you know, leagues and long seasons. So you want to, those horses to preserve and to, to last for the longest. So you start spraying. Now everybody does it. You know, why do you bring your own farrier to your team or your own vet? Because you have access, you have, you know, your protection. So all these things is like, what can you do to make yourself better? Is the preparation, the organization, the training, the, the whole thing. And sometimes you have to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and do it, you know? But that's what it takes to become 10 goals or to become a champion player. All champion players, they have to do that. There is not the one that was put on the thing and said, okay, you're a champion. As simple as that. Thank you, that was good. Well, thank you very much. I think I confused you enough, <laughs> but uh, one thing I, I want to tell you is that I'm very excited that you guys are here, and thank you for coming, and anything I can do to help you in your polo careers, you're welcome, and uh, I make myself accessible, and in any way, shape, or form, I would like to help you and, uh, and to achieve your dream, and hopefully we can get some Tangle players out of this table, so you guys are welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank mm -hmm. you.